Abusive relationships are formed on a foundation of lies, both lies that are told from the abuser to the victim and lies that the victim tells him or herself. In this video, I'm going to go over eight lies that abuse victims often tell themselves while they're in the abusive relationship. Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I am providing links below for you. Before I get into this, I'm going to be stating eight lies that we tell ourselves. And just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use the pronoun he, but of course I want to acknowledge that abusive people can be male or female. And these lies don't all necessarily pertain to a romantic relationship. It could be any kind of relationship, a friendship, a family member, a workplace relationship, any kind of relationship in which you are being abused. But I am just going to stick to the pronoun he because it gets really tedious to keep saying he and she all the time. So lie number one, I need to try harder. It's up to me. When we're in an abusive relationship, it can be really easy to take responsibility for things that are not our responsibility and to imagine that we have control over things that we don't have control over. We can spend years trying to fix something that we really can have no effect on. You can't turn an abusive person into a nice, reasonable person. You can't turn an abusive relationship into a healthy relationship. But until we can acknowledge that that's what we're dealing with, we can just keep telling ourselves that we can do this because we're being blamed for everything anyway. And that can really feed into this illusion that it must be our fault. So it must be within our power to fix it. I think the moment that we truly realize that there really is nothing that we can do about it and that we are not responsible for the abusive behavior of somebody else, I think that's the moment when we have an opportunity to free ourselves from the mental prison of being in an abusive relationship. And this is closely related to lie number two. It makes sense that he is so upset with me. When we love and respect somebody and we're sharing our lives with them and we trust them and maybe we have them up on a pedestal in our minds and that person becomes very upset with us, it's easy to jump to the assumption that we've done something to upset them. That's kind of a natural thing to assume. If somebody's angry with us, we must have done something, right? And if somebody is extremely angry at us and is screaming insults at us and is having a fit, we must have done something really terrible. And narcissistic and abusive people can come up with a whole laundry list of reasons that they're upset. In reality, the real reasons that they have no control over their emotions and the real reasons that they are so angry really have nothing to do with anything you did. Those things are used as an excuse. The abuser is using anything that they can grab as an excuse for their anger. But you did not actually cause that anger. This is a really easy lie to tell ourselves. Well, of course he's so upset. I mean, I'm not a very good cook, am I? I mean, of course he would be upset to be married to somebody that can't cook. <laughs> you know, like it's okay to tear somebody down because they aren't meeting your expectations. The third lie we tell ourselves, things will get better. Somehow in our minds, we're sure that next week or next month or next year, everything's going to be fine. We just need to get through this rough patch. He's just extra stressed out. He's just going through a hard time. He just doesn't quite understand. I just need to try harder. I just need to explain this better. I just need to do what he's asking me. I need to figure this out. Things will get better. Things will always get better. And next thing you know, it's been five, 10, 20 years and things have only gotten worse. Abusive relationships don't get better. They get worse. However, if you're the abuse victim, you've probably spent the whole time believing that any day now, things are gonna get better. Any day now, 
He's going to stop drinking. He's going to stop yelling at me. He's going to suddenly understand what I've been trying to tell him. He's going to get that promotion. We're going to buy that dream house that will make him happy. It's always something that's going to happen down the road. I just need to be patient. I just need to wait this out. Lie number four that we tell ourselves. I am so lucky to be with him. Abusive relationships often start from a place of vulnerability. People that enter abusive relationships are either in an emotionally vulnerable place or a physically vulnerable place. There's something that the abuser has taken advantage of and whatever that thing is has made the abuse victim feel lucky and fortunate to be with this person. Maybe you're an extra lonely person and maybe you've just gotten out of a bad relationship and, and you're just really feeling down, depressed, anxious, whatever. And along comes a knight in shining armor to save the day and you're gonna feel so grateful to have this person in your life. Or maybe you're a, a widow with children. Maybe you're just a single mom struggling to make ends meet. And along comes this white knight to save the day and take care of you. And you feel ungrateful to think of anything but gratitude when you think of this person. I'm so lucky to be with this person. It's also really common to feel a euphoric type of love, like a really intense kind of attraction to this person. So you might just feel really lucky to be so in love and to have found such a special love. And this creates the illusion of, I have something so special with this person and I'm so grateful for this person that the bad stuff is worth it. I can put up with the bad days. I can tolerate being treated like crap sometimes because I'm so lucky to have this person in my life. Abuse victims are not lucky. Abuse victims are not fortunate that somebody came along and took advantage of their vulnerabilities. We're unlucky. Being an abuse victim is something that has to be overcome and it's always much harder to get out of, escape, and recover from an abusive relationship than it was to deal with whatever it was the abuser rescued us from. Lie number five, he doesn't mean it. He just doesn't understand what he's saying. He doesn't understand how much this is hurting me. I just need to explain this to him. If he just knew, if he just understood that he's hurting my feelings, he wouldn't keep doing this. There is really no reason that a functioning grown adult will not understand when they're hurting you, when they're being abusive and cruel, when you're crying in front of them and they're just indifferent and cold towards you. If you need to explain that to someone or if you need to lie to yourself and tell yourself, he's just stressed out he's just not thinking yeah he's not thinking because he doesn't care it's not even so much that he doesn't understand that he's hurting you it's that he doesn't care that he's hurting you the fact that he's hurting you is barely a passing thought and to think he doesn't mean it he doesn't care he does mean it he does mean what he's saying he's saying the things that are just flying out of his mouth and he doesn't care how much it hurts you we can stay in denial for years continuing to tell ourselves over and over again oh he cares about me i know he does i know that he wouldn't say these things if he understood he understands he understands just fine and that's really painful to face but it's also very freeing lie number six other people wouldn't understand if they knew what was actually going on. What I mean by this is maybe he's been yelling at you or she, I'm gonna throw that in there because again, I wanna remind you this can be a he or a she, but maybe he's been yelling at you all night long about the way you put the dishes away or the way you folded your laundry and you're really distressed and upset, but you can't tell anybody about it because they wouldn't understand, right? You wouldn't want anyone to think that you're with a cruel, mean, abusive person because he's not abusive. He's just misunderstood. He was just having a bad night. And if I tell people what he actually said to me, if I, if I tell people the names he's called me and the things he's done, well, they'll think bad things about him. They won't understand. 
The truth is they will understand and that's the whole problem. We tell ourselves this lie thinking that we're being respectful for somebody's privacy, thinking that it's somehow classy not to air our dirty laundry when really we're just keeping secrets. Really, we're just covering up for somebody who's cruel and abusive towards us. And I think that deep down, we know that other people are going to understand and that's why we don't wanna say anything because we don't wanna hear what we're not ready to hear. And we can be a little embarrassed as well. We don't really want people to know what it is that we're putting up with how imperfect our perfect relationship actually is. Number seven, it's not that bad. Almost any victim of abuse, no matter how severe the abuse was, minimizes their own experience. Abuse victims always minimize their experiences because it at some point was their normal and abuse isn't supposed to feel normal. But if you're being abused, that abuse becomes your normal. It is that bad. If you are living in fear, if you're nervous or uncomfortable to go home, if you're not safe in your own home, and I don't just mean physically safe, but if you're not safe to accidentally leave a dish out on the table or to forget to sweep that corner of the floor or leave your shoes in the wrong place, if you're not safe in your own home and you've got to make sure certain things are exactly perfect or you're going to be yelled at and abused because you walked across the carpet in your shoes, that's not safe. That's not how you should feel in your own home. Everyone should have a right to feel safe in their own home. And when you don't feel safe in your own home, that's bad. That's, that's really, really bad. That's a fundamental human right that everyone should have. And abuse isn't a contest. There's always going to be someone that has suffered worse abuse than you. Abuse doesn't have to be horrific to be bad enough to leave. No one should have to live in an environment in which they're being emotionally controlled, coerced to live in a way that they don't want to live afraid to make the wrong move, walking on eggshells, and just generally feeling worthless, like nothing they do is ever good enough. And like any moment, any moment, for no rhyme or reason, all hell could break loose. That's bad enough. Maybe it's not that bad, but it's bad enough. There's no level of abuse that's okay. And I think that that's kind of the core of this lie. It's not that bad. It's kind of like saying, it's okay, I can put up with this much abuse. People that abuse you don't care about you and people that make your home an unsafe place to be, what are you really getting out of that relationship that makes it worth it? And number eight, the last lie for this video is I'll never find anything better. And this can kind of go back to the lie of I have something so special with this person this lie is just a fear really of the unknown. What's going to happen if I break this off? Where am I gonna go? I'll never find anyone as special as this. I'll never find anyone that makes me feel this great. You know, you probably won't because abusive relationships are very volatile and unpredictable. The highs are very high, but the lows are very low and you're probably not gonna find somebody that gives you those euphoric drug-like highs, but you could probably find someone that doesn't give you the lows that an abusive relationship gives you. you. You could actually find somebody that you could find a meaningful, deep, stable, healthy relationship with, or you could just be by yourself for a while because being alone is much better than being in an abusive relationship. So if you think I'll never find anything better, if you're in an abusive relationship, being with no one is better. So even if you believe the lie that nobody else will ever love you and that you'll never find anyone else because you're so flawed and so worthless and such a disappointment, even if that was true, you're still better off being without someone that looks at you that way. You can start to develop your own self-worth 
on your own when you don't live with someone that's constantly trying to tell you what a disappointment you are. So to summarize it all, you can't fix an abusive relationship. You don't have something special. You have somebody that's taking advantage of you. You can find something better by just leaving it. He doesn't care if he's hurting you. He does understand, he just doesn't care. It doesn't make sense for him to be that upset with you over such minor trivial things and you know it. Other people would understand what's going on if they were there and they could hear and see the things that were happening. Are you ready to hear the things that you don't wanna hear? Are you ready to start telling yourself the truth? I hope this helps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you have for me for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks, bye.